starts right now. We parts of the area under a severe thunderstorm warning tonight. This April Fools may see Mother Nature taking center stage tonight with hail and 60 mile an hour wind gusts. These are the things that we're watching out for as storms move toward our area. Adam, where are the storms right now? Actually, we're talking Medina County moving into western Bear County and western portions of San Antonio. This is the severe thunderstorm that we have in place right now. Of course, a bit of lightning and thunder with it. You can see these white lines, the cloud, the most recent cloud to ground lightning strikes, but also the purple area really stands out because that is the hail within the thunderstorm that's likely about one inch in diameter. So about the size of quarters, which can cause some damage. This is pushing eastward, <clears throat> excuse me, at a good 40 mile per hour. So to time this out for some neighborhoods that are in its path, let's let's just focus on the hail portion of the storm. And UTSA getting it at 1021 PM, Leon Valley at about 1018 PM, Castle Hills if it stays together at 1028. But the warned area is from Holotus to UTSA, just about to Hollywood Park, Shavano Park, Jefferson High School. One other quick look at this storm. I want to give you a 3D view of it and show you just where we're looking at with the hail. So this is the 3D view and right here, this purple area, that's the hail within the thunderstorm right now falling on Rio Medina. But that hail is headed eastward and that's gonna make it to SeaWorld area right there, SeaWorld at 1014 p.m. I'm gonna get some new data and have an update here coming up in a few minutes. All right, thank you, Adam. Time ticking down till next Monday. We are now less than seven days away from the total solar eclipse. That's right. And it's all hands on deck for first responders over in Kerr County who are preparing for the number of people there to double, even triple the day of the total eclipse. The night team's Patty Santos tells us the record breaking crowds expected to be part of the largest event that community might ever see. Next Monday, the Louise Hayes Park and the roads leading into Kerrville will be flooded with thousands of visitors trying to experience the total eclipse. Local law enforcement tell me they're ready for it. Traffic is going to be bad. Kerrville no Police Community Sergeant there. Jonathan Lamb says the biggest problem they anticipate on Eclipse Day is traffic and crowd management. This is sort of the Super Bowl of, of events that uh, Kerrville is, is facing. And I think, I don't think we'll ever see anything like it in my lifetime. Other public safety aspects that come with the influx of visitors, illegal parking calls, medical emergencies, and limited cell service. This is the one that's actually sold out. The focus before the eclipse will be getting buses and vehicles to designated parking lots and watch areas. After the eclipse, police will turn Sydney Baker Street into a three-lane exit to get the crowds out quickly. We'll have uh, automated signs around town directing people for the back to the quickest route back to the interstate. Along with regular KPD officers, the city has also hired additional officers from San Antonio to assist. We're about prepared as we can and we're ready to get it over. Kirk County Sheriff Larry Latha will have 55 deputies working across the county Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. DPS is also sending an additional 20 troopers as backup and possibly an air life unit. We're still kind of waiting as far as fuel, extra water and stuff like that. You know, the fuel, that's a big deal for us. With limited mobility, he says life saving calls will take priority. All eight ambulances are going to be running that day. That's every ambulance that the city of Kerrville's uh, fire department has. Kerr County Emergency Manager William Thomas says over 200 first responders are scheduled to be on the clock. This is going to be a labor intensive operation. They're urging residents to stay home and visitors to bring extra fuel, food and medications because it could take hours if roads get clogged. We've heard of traffic takes 10 or 12 hours to get out. So guys here, they're really planning for the unknown and because yeah. they don't know how much overtime and how many supplies, how much supplies they're going to need, that's why they have already declared a, a state of emergency there. Well, and that makes sense when you you've heard the big concerns about running out of gas. Yeah. If it takes you 10 or 12 hours to get out of town, yeah. you, you there's going to be a run on gasoline. Then. Yeah, exactly. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens that day. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Patty. Thank you. Well, you know, you're talking about this, you know, even the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is preparing for Monday's eclipse with so many people coming here for the big event. There is a greater chance for accidents or traumatic injuries. Hopefully that doesn't happen. But the Blood and Tissue Center says that it is ready to send blood wherever it's needed by road or by air. But here's the problem. They actually need blood to deliver. We're trying to get ahead of the curve. You know, we're a week away from the eclipse, so we're we're doing our best to get the word out about how important it is. 
So everybody who rolls up their sleeves this week will get a special Fiesta medal commemorating the center's 50 year anniversary. And we've got more glasses giveaways every day for the rest of the week. This one tomorrow at the Tacos Norteño on Hebner. You can hop in line to get your glasses at five o'clock The giveaway at six. There's only 300 glasses available, so make sure you show up early. Adam Kasky will be out there live times and locations for the other giveaways also on our website right now. Also, if you have questions about the eclipse, we'll answer them. The KSAT weather team will host a live Q&A live stream Wednesday night where they'll address all eclipse questions. Just scan the QR code for instant access to the KSAT Eclipse Authority webpage where you can find every case at eclipse related story in just one place. In other news now, a federal judge ruled that migrants flown from San Antonio to Martha's Vineyard can sue the charter flight company that brought them there. You remember that happened back in 2022. Those 50 Venezuelan migrants say that they were promised housing and also work opportunities. Now those migrants and their lawyers can sue the Florida based charter company Vertol Systems Governor Ron DeSantis also named in that lawsuit. His office contends those flights were legal and authorized by Florida state lawmakers. Also new tonight, former President Donald Trump posting a $175 million bond. This is part of his civil fraud trial in New York. You remember he was originally ordered to pay $454 million after a judge found that he inflated the value of his assets to get cheaper interest rates on loans. But then last month, the New York appellate court slashed that bond down to $175 million. And now that the president posted his bond, his assets are not going to be seized. In the meantime, though, the president is appealing the ruling. Family members grieving the loss of a 33-year-old woman killed in her own home. Ana Ojeda was found Friday inside her Lucky Ranch home in the far west side. And just a few hours ago, friends and family held a vigil at her front door on Davalos Lane. Around the same time, the medical examiner confirmed that Ojeda was stabbed to death and she leaves behind a six-year-old daughter. Mommy, that is a beautiful woman. And can a mother and daughter and friends. Everybody loves her, so. She's a hard worker, and she don't deserve this that she happens on Friday. You can hear the pain in her voice. That was Ojeda's mother. She's pleading with neighbors who might have video or witness something to call the Bear County investigators. The tips can be called in to BCSO at 210-335-6000. A gut punch. That's how a woman felt after hearing that the person investigators think killed her grandfather still hasn't been found. The victim in the case is Robert Isaacs. The 88 year old's body was found in Crockett County on November 17th. Now, police have identified that woman, Frida Michelle Thomas, as the suspect. And for a few hours today, they thought she was in custody down in Mexico. But then that turned out not to be the case. And nonetheless, Isaac's granddaughter tells us she's disappointed. You go from one extreme to the other. And again, you, you go back to the place you woke up in. But it's it's sad um, and, it, and it's frustrating because it was a relief to know that there was actually going to be some some progress made. So investigators continue to look now for Frida Michelle Thomas. If you've seen her or you know where she is, call the sheriff's office. Their number is 830-796-3771. It was a surprise Uvalde Mayor Cody Smith resigning from his job less than six months into his tenure. Smith cited recent medical issues as the reason he resigned. He defeated the mother of a Rob Elementary victim, Kimberly Rubio, to become the mayor. Now that Smith's resigned, Mayor Pro Tem Everado Zamora is going to serve as mayor. The people of Uvalde are going to choose their new leader after that in November. So don't panic. That is the message from a doctor that we spoke with today after state health officials announced that someone in Texas was diagnosed with bird flu. Now, bird flu, not new. It originated decades ago in 1996. What is new to researchers is the transmission in this case, because the person here in Texas got the bird flu from a cow. Dr. Larry Schlesinger is the president and CEO of Texas Biomed, and he says that we shouldn't worry too much because there's been no human to human transmission of bird flu on record. Listen, you shouldn't panic because the virus is not new. Transmission is low. 
We really know of no human to human transmission. He also said that Texas Biomed is constantly working to create tools to guard against all kinds of viruses. Some students in the spotlight at Bear Fest tonight. What this experience means for those kids next on the night beat. And before we had to break another look at weather radar right now, storms rolling through the Alamo Ranch right now. That's part of the severe thunderstorm warning. Adam Kasky with a more in-depth look at these storms right after the break. Severe thunderstorm rolling into Alamo Ranch right now. It just moved through the city of Rio Medina, and this is the size hail that was submitted to KSAT Connect from our viewer in Rio Medina. That's about a two inch diameter hailstone that hit. So let's get a look at this storm. Severe thunderstorm moving through Alamo Ranch, crossing over 1604, hitting SeaWorld right now, about to get to Holmes High School. Leon Valley getting clipped. John Jay High School up next, along with 410. That's 410 from 16, which is Bandera Road, all the way down to Highway 90. Too late to go outside and try to move your vehicle or whatever. This is the hail core right here. This black and purple area that you see, these are the higher reflectivities um, up from the storm. So that means the radar is seeing a bigger signature, which is indicative of hail in this situation. And you can see it hitting Warren High School. Northwest Vista, SeaWorld, all the way down to Stevens. Now this is headed off to the east at 40 miles per hour. So first we're going to get a 3D look at it, and then we'll take a look at the track and the path of where that hail core is going. We're focusing just on the hail in this particular thunderstorm and in this situation. 3D view shows the big top spreading up and over, the motion of the storm turning off the lightning so it doesn't distract you here. Then what we can do is just isolate the hail within the storm. The purple up here, that's the hail that's suspended up within the updraft of the thunderstorm. So that's up in the thunderstorm. And then what you see here closer to the ground, those are the hailstones that are getting too big for the updraft to hold them up and they're actually falling down to the ground. So that's what we have right here in this purple area. Again, SeaWorld approaching Stevens High School and on over to about Leon Valley. A wider view shows it's just this isolated hail core, but there's a lot of hail up there still to fall down. So let's time this out for some areas. For example, not even included in the warned area, at least not yet, San Antonio International Airport, 1031 p.m., that hail portion getting to almost park at 1031. Hollywood Park, you are right on the edge of that hail, but assuming it stays intact, it'd be at 1033 PM. Again, that's just this hail portion of the thunderstorm. Within this storm, there could also be a few wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour. So that's why we're watching this so closely because of the potential of the damaging hail and those wind gusts. We can get right into this hail core for you. It's hitting the medical center, all these purple areas, Marshall High School. This here we are, Leon Valley, right along 16 Bandera Road. This is the worst part of the storm. One and a half to two inch diameter hail that's ping pong ball sized all the way up to even the size of an egg, your typical egg. And one other feature I'm noticing here is this little bit of a hook action right now. Something to watch that we'll keep an eye on, but the main focus is that hail core. And notice how that's the only action we have across our area at the moment. Now, assuming it maintains its strength and its trajectory. That area of hail headed off to the east at 40. These things are flying along and they're moving quickly. Uh, that could very well make it to Lee High School at 1026, Monta Vista 1027, Alamo Heights High School at 1030, uh, Kirby at 1037, and Roosevelt High School at 1037. That's the timing with this thunderstorm. And right after the night beat, I will be live on the KSAT Weather Authority app to keep tracking this severe thunderstorm and the hail. I'm hoping it starts to cycle down, but these storms can cycle and pulse right back up. So that's what we're going to be watching with this right now. The, the hail within the storm is hitting 410 Holmes High School. You go back to SeaWorld and this black area is actually some of what's probably the largest hail within this thunderstorm. And when I mean the radar seen a bigger signature within the storm, we're talking 63 decibels compared to the rain, 
which is a 44.5. So you see that difference there. And this is, a, this is the largest and strongest part of the storm that's headed off to the east right now. So this is what we're tracking, but I also want to point out that we have a cold front moving through as we speak, and the cold front's shifting the winds. So the cold front's helping to lift the air and get that instability in action and turn it into storms, but the wind is starting to shift that's the cold front. It's getting a little breezy from the cold front and that's going to make a big difference in the weather for the rest of the week. Still have the humidity, but look at how the dew points drop off in the hill country. That humidity gets swept away with this cold front and you'll feel the cooler, less humid air for the rest of the week. 58 in the morning, 75 at noon. By 5 p.m., we're at 80 degrees. A lot of sunshine, low humidity, just a bit breezy with that northwesterly wind at 15 to 25. I want to point out a little bit cooler in the mornings, Wednesday and Thursday in the upper 40s. A lot of sunshine all week, highs near 80s this weekend. We get into the little bit of extra cloud cover and humidity and a few morning showers possible on Sunday. Eclipse next Monday. Still think there's a good chance of some clouds. However, there's don't lose hope just yet. This is a, an uncertain weather pattern and we've seen it change before, so we'll keep you updated. Here's a look at live cam outside right now. You can see the lightning to thunder because there we go. Storms moving right over crossroads I 10 and 410 another update coming up in a little bit. Yeah, obviously, Adam, if something happens that we need to get on the air with, you just interrupt us. All right, getting real world experience while giving back. That's at the heart of Bear Fest, the annual film festival pairing local high school students with nonprofits to put their efforts in the spotlight. The night team's John Paul Barajas there for tonight's festival and awards. It's a one of a kind event for multimedia high school students. Definitely exciting, a lot of nerves. The eighth annual Bear Fest showcased the audio and visual work of students from 19 high schools. Tonight we celebrate the work of all of our students and recognize the outstanding achievements from the best of the best. Welcome to Bear Fest. After six months of work, they celebrated in style with a red carpet hosted by KSET's meteorologist Sarah Spivey. It makes us feel like a little bit like celebrities. You know? <laughs> me about the shades indoors. That's a bold statement. My future just that bright. These students put their skills to use by filming videos for 19 local nonprofits as organized by TRL Productions. Its board president, Buddy Cabo, says it's a win win experience for everyone involved. Students get the experience they need to be working with real professional clients. The nonprofits get these marketing assets that they use to fulfill their mission. And in general, we're introducing kids to a career path. Many students that we spoke to say the opportunity to work in a professional setting was eye-opening. I want to go into film, but now that I've done this compositional piece, I kind of feel like maybe I want to do movie scoring and things like that. So it's definitely broadened my horizons both to what's possible and what I'm capable of doing. And simply a good time. Going to film on site somewhere, because that's not something we get to do like in class a lot. So going like out during the school day has, was really, really fun. Our teacher bought us canes. Shout out to her. Schools took home honors for categories in best storytelling, picture, and cinematography, just to name a few. But when best sound goes to Stevens High School. Or lose, students have new material for their portfolios, and nonprofits have fresh videos to help promote their work in the community. John Paul Barajas, KSAT, 12 News. A lot of talent in that auditorium. The full list of tonight's winners on our website right now, KSAT.com. And before thunderstorm moving in the west side that's about to cross over I-10 in the crossroads area. It's headed toward Alamo Heights right now and the International Airport. Warning just got extended. We'll analyze the storm in just a bit. A quick update on the severe thunderstorm that's moving through the heart of San Antonio right now. The severe thunderstorm warning has been extended eastward. That includes the shirts all the way over towards Seguin and areas in between. The worst part of the storm in terms of hail is this purple area right here near Alamo Heights, Jefferson High School, Castle Hills. That's headed eastward. There could be some wind gusts of 50 to 60 miles per hour within the storm, but we're focusing on this purple and black area. That's the hail at Crossroads, Balcones Heights, basically four 10 and or I 10 all the way down a little bit closer to downtown, but it's not reaching downtown. This is headed off to the northeast. As for timeline, 
If you are in Windcrest, well, Alamo Heights, just a few minutes. If you're in Windcrest, it's going to make it at 1036 p.m. Kirby, you could even be hit by that southern appendage of hail at 1037 p.m. as this continues to move eastward. I'll have more times coming up in just a few minutes uh, in the newscast toward the end of the newscast. We'll keep an eye on this. We'll stay on air and keep you updated as well. Spurs guard Devin Vassell and forward Jeremy Sohan will both miss the remainder of the regular season due to injuries. The Spurs emailed us at 5.41 p.m. with the news. Vassell underwent an MRI this morning in San Antonio, and the exam revealed a stress reaction to the third metatarsal head on his right foot, and he is done. Vassell is averaging a career 19 and a half points per game this season. Now, Sohan was diagnosed with a left ankle impingement. After a consultation with outside experts, the Spurs medical team has determined that arthroscopic surgery is the best approach to correct the injury. Sohan and Vassell will miss the Spurs final seven games of the season and the team will provide updates as appropriate. So the Spurs will play tomorrow night at eight at the Denver Nuggets. Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese put on a show in the women's elite eight tonight. Iowa versus LSU. Reese had 17 points, 20 rebounds, two steals, three blocks, but she fouled out late in the game. Meanwhile, Clark had a game best 41 points and 12 assists as Iowa gets through LSU this time around. Iowa wins 94 to 87. And at last check, UConn and Southern Cal were tied at 59 late in the fourth quarter. Um, it feels great, honestly. Coming from Texas, like we're a big competitive uh, basketball, like it's competitive down there. But in San Antonio specifically, you don't get that much shine down there. So doing something for the hometown, um, it's different and it's really special. Ari is all about repping Clark High School and the 2-1-0. Ariana Robertson is a 2024 McDonald's All-American. The Duke commit will suit up tomorrow night for the West Squad. The girls tip at 6.30 p.m. followed by the boys game in Houston at the Toyota Center. Josh Young had a hot night, but it ends on a downer after the break. After taking two or three from the Cubs, Josh Young and the Rangers open a three game series in Tampa Bay tonight. Top of the first inning with two runners on base. Young gets a pitch up high and crushes it to left field for a three run shot and the Rangers lead this three to nothing. Top of the six, same score when Young comes up with an RBI single to center field, scoring Corey Seager and it's four nothing champs. Josh went three for four with four ribbies before getting hurt. Top nine bases loaded for Young and the pitch hits him on the right wrist during his swing. He drops the bat puts his arms above his head in pain. He left the game for good. And then during post, Rangers manager Bruce Bochy said Josh suffered a fractured right wrist. He did not set a timetable for Young's return, but he's going to miss some game. The Rangers take it 9-3, and the Astros get their first one of the season. 10-0 over the Blue Jays. And the big news in that one, Astros right-handed pitcher Ronel Blanco throws a no-hitter in his eighth career start. It's the 17th no-no in Astros franchise history. Dude struck out seven, and he walked two. All right. I believe we're checking back in again with Adam Kasky. Yep, here's the latest timing. We'll show you the latest timings of this uh, thunderstorm with large hail coming right up. All right, here's our latest analysis from our authority radar. And you look at the timing of the worst part of the storm, which is the hail in the purple area. Live Oak, 1037 p.m. Uh, Shirts at 1039. Marion High School, 1043. Santa Clara at 1043 p.m. as well. This is a strong, severe thunderstorm that's headed off to the northeast at about 45 miles per hour now. So moving very quickly. And the primary threat is hail, and that's the purple part within this thunderstorm that's hitting Windcrest right now. And right at 410 and, or I should say at 410 and I-35 in the Windcrest area, this is where we have the hail, the purples and the blacks. Eisenhower Road here up to 410, Roosevelt High School, Windcrest, and that's all pushing off toward Randolph Air Force Base shirts. Live Oak, I think you'll be just on the northern extent of this. You look at the hail track of this storm and you see that it definitely has been meaning business. Rio Medina had about two inch size hail. This is the track of hail within the storm and it's continuing to track off to the east. I'll be live on KSAT Weather Authority app in, a, in about 90 seconds back live here on KSAT 12.